Hey, it's Haley, and welcome to another bookish video. So today, this is like such a highly anticipated video for me to be filming right now, and I am so happy about it. I am going to be giving you my full guide to Lisa Jewell's thrillers. If you guys don't know, Lisa Jewell is one of my very favorite authors of all time. She's right up there with Karen Slaughter for me, and I absolutely love her domestic thrillers. Something about the way that they're written is just so perfect for me. They align with my taste so well. I always love all of her characters because they're like fucked up in a weird way, but also just so lovable and relatable and human. And all of her books are set in like the English British suburbs of the UK. And that is my favorite setting of all time. And it's all just suburban, crazy, rich people drama, which I'm always here for. So I am super excited to share with you guys all of my thoughts on Lisa Jules' thrillers and I'm going to give you a synopsis of each one, my rating for each one, and then at the very end, I'm going to rank them. So let's go ahead and start with some of her most well-known books. These are all of the new release hardcover publications that I have. They all go with each other very nicely, and I'm kind of obsessed with this stack right now. So first up, probably one of Lisa Jewell's most well-known books is watching you so this follows a lady who's a little bit crazy and she spies on all of her neighbors and is convinced that somebody is stalking her and watching her as well and one day when a murder takes place in this sleepy little wealthy suburb in the uk this woman is convinced that she knows exactly who did it because she's been watching out her windows and she knows all the tea on all the neighbors so we're getting the perspective of a bunch of different neighbors and everyone has tea on everybody else and all the perspectives are so convoluted and you're trying to put together all the clues from everybody's different perspective. But the end was very lackluster for me. I kind of saw it coming, which again, you guys know, I'm not horribly disappointed if a thriller is predictable because I still feel like I have a fun time. And sometimes when I predict the ending, I'm really proud of myself and it's very satisfying for me. So that doesn't automatically mean it's a bad book in my eyes. However, this is not one of my favorite Lisa Jewel books and I give it three stars. Next up, we have The Girls in the Garden. And I read this one at the very tail end of 2019. And this is the book that really sold me and got me into Lisa Jewell. If you're looking for a classic murder mystery, domestic thriller with creepy dark undertones, this is the one for you. Basically, this little single mother and her two little beautiful daughters move into this sweet little house and the garden or the backyard like backs up onto every all the other people's backyard. So it's kind of like this shared garden space behind all these houses and everybody kind of just lets their kids play there. You know, it's all facing the back of these neighbors uh, houses that they trust. So it's not a very big deal to let your kids just kind of run around there until one day one of the daughters gets murdered and she is just dead in this garden. And all the other kids are trying to figure out what happened. Obviously the mom is trying to figure out what happened and everyone in the neighborhood has the tea. There are so many different suspects, so many red herrings and the ending of this one really caught me by surprise. I had a totally different theory and it went like right to the left of what I was thinking. So I really enjoyed this one. I read it in like just a few hours. It is so fast paced and I give it five stars. Next up, we have The Family Upstairs. This follows a girl who never really knew her family. She was adopted, so she doesn't know anything about where she comes from. But one day she's contacted by a lawyer who has a huge inheritance for her and her family actually leaves her this huge mansion. So she's trying to kind of piece together what happened to her as a child and why she got put up for adoption and dive back into her past and 
figure out what the hell happened in this house. And she's also introduced to a bunch of living extended family members. So that is a shock. And you're kind of trying to put together the pieces of the past using the living family members and this huge, beautiful house that she inherited. So you get a lot of perspectives from people in the family. You're not really quite sure who to trust the entire time, but this one is a little bit boring and did lag a little bit. It's not as thrilling and fast paced as some of Lisa Jewell's other books. So this one wasn't um, the biggest shocker for me. I did still enjoy it, but I gave it a 2.5. It's not the best. Just your average thriller. Next up, I have Then She Was Gone. And this one is one of my favorites and I'm absolutely obsessed with this book. It is so crazy. This one doesn't have any crazy big twists at the end, but just the concept of the story and how it unfolds is so weird and creepy and disgusting and um, it's wild. This is another one that I read in like just a few hours. It is so fast paced. It follows this woman whose daughter was abducted many, many years ago. Her young daughter was abducted and she is obviously still grieving over the loss of her daughter, but she decides to put herself back out there and she starts dating this guy and it gets pretty serious. So he ends up introducing her to his daughter who is eerily like the daughter that she had when she went missing. But obviously it's not her because his daughter now is the same age as her daughter when she went missing. So this girl is not Benjamin Button. This is not the same person, but she's trying to figure out why they're so eerily similar and how their lives could have possibly been connected before the abduction of her daughter. It is extremely disturbing and creepy and uh, you kind of know what's happening the whole time. You're just watching it unfold and being like, <laughs> it is so weird to read about and it just gives me the creeps every time I think about it. Highly recommend if you like that kind of stuff. Five stars for me. And then we have Lisa Joel's most recent release. This is Invisible Girl. This follows Sapphire, a troubled girl who has gone missing and you're getting perspectives uh, on the many people who are witnessing her disappearance and may have had a hand in her disappearance. So you're following a creepy uh, teacher at her school who is being accused and actually is fired for sexual misconduct and he's an incel and it's just it's a very dark situation with him you're also following her therapist and there might have been an inappropriate relationship there as well and you're following people in the neighborhood where she went missing other teenage girls that might have seen her or been involved with her and you're trying to figure out what happened to her and along the way all these other secrets get revealed this is a very classic domestic thriller where all of the suburban people are kind of peeking out their windows trying to figure out what's happening everyone has tea on everybody else and i thought this was so good it's a lot darker than Lisa Joel's other stuff. And I really liked that. It was giving me Karen Slaughter vibes at some point. And I thought it was really shocking the way that everything comes together. I love when there's a domestic thriller with all these different perspectives and you're trying to figure out how everything fits together. And the end is not only shocking, but satisfying when all of those pieces kind of interlock. So I gave this one five stars. It was one of my very favorite books that I read in 2020 and I highly recommend it. Now I'm gonna get into some of Lisa Jewell's older thrillers. I don't have them in the kind of like nice hardback matching versions. I just have these paperbacks of these guys and they are literally so beat up and gross because I've taken these books everywhere. I've reread them. I've brought them to the beach. I've brought them to the pool. I actually dropped this one in the pool, which is why she looks like that. So <laughs> You know the drill. I love Lisa Joel and I will take her books all across the earth with me. Let's go ahead and get into The Third Wife. This isn't so much of a thriller, um, more it's just like a domestic mystery with very dark and creepy undertones. 
Basically, this man is on his third wife, but all of his previous <laughs> wives and their kids all get along. So they're like this one big happy family. And this third wife is being brought into the mix. She's trying to kind of find her place in this weird, uh, very uncomfortable dynamic. And she starts receiving these threatening emails that are like, get out of our family, bitch. So she's trying to figure out who is sending them and what is going on in this situation. This is another one that has like very uncomfortable family dynamics and I think that is a pretty common theme among all of Lisa Jewell's books. So if you like that, you will like this and many other of these books. I give this one five stars. My mom read this one and she didn't like it as much as any of these other ones that I'm talking about, but I just think like the creepiness factor in this one and like the uncomfortable dysfunctional family dynamics are so interesting. Maybe it's my therapist brain that I just want to dive into everyone's trauma and diagnose them, but um, I love this book. Next up, we have The House We Grew Up In, and this is really similar. It has those uncomfortable, weird family dynamics. There's not much of a mystery. You pretty much know what is happening the entire time you're reading this book, but it is just so creepy and disgusting that you're like, eh, wait, no, wait, that's really happening right now. Oh, okay, that's... Okay, that's happening. Okay. Okay. This one is very intense and it has a lot of actually pretty accurate mental health representation in my opinion. And uh, it just keeps getting weirder and creepier and creepier. And when you think this family can't be any creepier, yeah, you guessed it. They uh, up the creep factor. And basically the story follows this family and the matriarch of this family was a hoarder. Okay, slight lighting and angle change. I'm sorry about that. My phone actually just died in the middle of me speaking. So now I'm filming on Cameron's phone, but y'all are probably happy for the quality upgrade because he has a lot better phone than I do. So hey, look at this high quality queen. Oh my God, now I'm gonna be distracted looking at myself while I'm trying to talk about these books. Ah, uh, she's a narcissist. Uh, it's fine. Anyway, this book, I was talking about this book. It follows the family. The matriarch of the family is a hoarder. Her house is just filled with stuff. She's addicted to stuff and hoarding it. And it really has an adverse effect on her entire family. And unfortunately she passes away and her kids who are kind of all estranged from each other have to come together to clean out this completely just filled to the brim house. And while they're there, they're kind of digging into why they're all estranged from each other, all these past family dynamics and horrible ways that they've treated each other and things that have gone behind people's backs and secrets. And it is so freaking interesting. Again, maybe this is just because I'm a therapist and I'm interested in these weird things that people do and why they do them but I really love this book. Again, it's not very thrilling. You pretty much know what's going on the whole time. It's very straight straightforward, but it just is so dark and I'm living for it. Oh, and I don't remember if I said I did give this one five stars as well. And the very last book I have to talk to you about is I Found You. I know this is a lot of people's very favorite Lisa Jewell book. It is definitely up there for me too as well. I gave it five stars. <laughs> you will notice that I gave most of these books five stars. I just absolutely love and really connect with Lisa Jewell's writing style. So she's my queen. I just absolutely love her and I, it like actually physically pains me to give one of her books less than five stars. So I Found You follows this woman who finds a man on the beach and he's just there. He doesn't know how he got there. He's kind of in this dissociative fugue state where he doesn't know his name, doesn't know how he got there, doesn't know anything about himself. And she kind of takes him in and is trying to help him remember well, it turns out that they actually might be connected to each other uh, from their past. So you're trying to dig into their past, all of their secrets, and find out how they connect, who this man is, and if he's possibly connected to a murder that happened across the country. And that's kind of what the book's hinting at the whole time. So you're unraveling the mystery and trying to figure it out. This is another one that is so super freaking fast paced. I read this in one night. It was so easy to read, super fast paced and really thrilling. I highly recommend this one and I don't wanna give away too much about the plot because, oh my God, the twists in this book are insane. So those are all of the Lisa Jewel books that I have. Let's go ahead 
ahead and do a final ranking from worst to best. So my least favorite Lisa Jewel is The Family Upstairs. Right above that is Watching You. And I also find it really interesting that my bottom two books are probably her two most popular. So don't judge her writing based off these two because I'm a super fan and I don't really enjoy these books as compared to her others. Now we're into all five star territory. So it's going to be very thin margins here, but I think I would do The Third Wife, Then She Was Gone, I Found You, The House We Grew Up In, The Girls in the Garden, and The Best, Invisible Girl. I just absolutely fell in love with this book when it came out this past year. And I highly recommend you read all of these books. They're so good. If you're looking for British domestic thrillers, this is my definitive ranking of all the Lisa Jewell books I have read so far. Again, she does have some more mystery and contemporary feeling books that are from the early 2000s, but these are all of her modern thrillers and I love all of them for different reasons. So I really hope that you guys will pick some up and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!